Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules the Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we go out into the world and watch a little bit of anime, and today we're going to be talking about Rampa episode 5 through 9. It's a lot of episodes, five episodes, more than usual. We're going to talk about episode 5 through 9, and I'm not here in the, the spare high school alone. I'm here with my co-host, Matt Galley. Matt, how are you doing? I am here, <laughs> presence, ready to do the thing. Um, Matt isn't feeling well. I'm not feeling too great, so I'm sorry if I have to excuse myself at any point. But we're here, we're ready to talk about anime, the dang it yes. wrong buzz. Um, how are you? Doing all right. Played some Baldur's Gate this week for the first time, and it's a lot of fun. Apparently my story is very different and it's been pretty cool it's been a lot of fun i've been having a lot of fun doing that and then uh getting ready for tomorrow my first day at my new job so i'm excited um we are talking about episode five through nine of dang and rampa if you missed last week and if you want to get our thoughts on that you can go to spotify uh and watch on spotify just look up the jewels and man anime hour on spotify or go to my youtube channel youtube.com slash jewels the human my name is right down there and uh go watch it there but you can watch on spotify or youtube or on any uh podcasting platform you can see that and go back and watch our thoughts on episode one through four again if this is your first time watching we go through a bunch of different anime we have so many coming up and next week we're going to be picking a new one so if you would like to uh possibly get one of yours picked give us 500 bits on this live stream on twitch.tv slash jules the human live stream uh 500 bits give us an anime recommendation here are the recommendations we have so far that are in the chest of anime and we'll be picking that next week at the end of the show here where here's some anime that we've already gone through on the show this is the first time that you're watching uh we've gone through quite a bit of anime a bunch of different ones as you see there and that's how we rate it on the left is me on the right is matt from s to f tier and next week we are going to be rating danganronpa on that tier list so i'm curious where it's going to be I don't know yet because this was a very different vibe for me uh, this time on on these couple episodes. And we have five episodes to go through, so let's get through it. Uh, let's get into it and talk yeah, about episode it. five, <laughs> Not Normal Arc, Weekly Shonen Despair Magazine. Um, yeah, episode five, another class trial commences. Uh, the serial killer genocider show turns out to be among the students. Fukawa has two personalities existing inside of her body, one being Genocider Show. However, after more deliberation, it is decided that Genocider could not be the culprit, with Owada being the one to slip up and ending up as the prime suspect. Owada ends up found uh, being found guilty after uh, Naegi paints the picture for everyone to understand the whole story leading to Owada taking a ride in the motorcycle death cage as his punishment. Ten remain. And there's ten remaining. This was <clears throat> kind of weird coming off of all the suspense of the last episode. This was just like, oh, here's Genocider Show. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, this is kind of just like a, hmm. Yes. And that's where I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, it just comes back into the conversation of uh they're trying to do what a 25 hour video game does in a mean in a span of 13 anime episodes mm -hmm. and it kind of comes out of nowhere too that yeah. um there was a different gender of somebody they somebody thought there was a different gender of one of the characters there was yeah, like I'm, so... I'm really abridging um <laughs> the trial yeah, for there, sure there was so much going on in the trial to make it to make it happen there was no intro because there was so much that needed to be said in this episode and so much to be like tied up it's always like um we noticed this that it's always one episode of uh the the dilemma and then the next episode is always the trial and the trial always takes so long mm -hmm. um but it could feel i don't know there, again there's not enough episodes 
but then I don't know if I would like it if there was more episodes to it, but it's just going at like some breakneck speed that's that's I don't know if I'm liking because I have to pay attention so hard on every sentence. Every think, sentence is important. I think in the I, I haven't played it, so you know, audience correct me um if I'm mistaken, but you know, in terms of gameplay, the game goes between three different phases of um uh, visual novel like socialization between students exploring slash exploring the school or whatever going to different rooms then you have the investigation phase where you have to actually go around the crime scenes and gather evidence and pieces of information that you can use in the trial then you have the trial so if you think of these like three different branches of the game in the game they're probably it probably feels a lot more balanced because you're yeah more time to get through everything but when a trial is an entire episode and they're making the 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 investigation visual novel part and the investigation like one episode it it doesn't strike a balance that and in these couple of episodes it feels like they almost I, i forgot which episode it was i think it was for the next ones but like it felt like the investigation was over so quickly yeah. It was like, oh, here are some flashes of some evidence. Yeah. And like I was still able to kind of ponder on them and try and figure it out myself, which is the fun part of the show. Like, yeah, that I... is something that's kind of weird. So like, why is but so why is it like that? And then mm-hmm. you start chart start to try to like put the pieces together in your own head. Yeah. And but it, it flashes it so quickly. So I think on this next one. And I'm like, I would, you know, we would pause sometimes and kind of think on it or or use the credits as sometimes a think to be like, hey this is what's presented what what could be it and then sometimes they bring up new evidence that we didn't know about at the end like the whole thing about um togami tampering with the evidence and that was like a whole thing in this one and i was like oh okay well then we have to start right at the beginning again it it, it like almost did like a redo it was like we're going down a a path we're almost there and then it was like no wait togami tampered with it to try and mess with them and to see if they were good uh, at discovering the truth. And it was like, wait, what? So we have to start at the beginning? Oh, my God. God, that made me hate him so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was so dumb. Was it needed? Maybe for his character. Maybe for us to hate him in general to understand who he is. But, like, we had to start all the way at the beginning. Yeah. And then, then we find out a lot as a killer. Yeah, and, and the, all that and stuff. The whole- concept of again like i i was talking about it in uh, uh, our last last thursday how i really felt like the whole concept of genocide or show was a red herring in this case and it was going to turn out that like it was actually togami using somebody else to pull it off which i wasn't right, right about that part but i was mm-hmm. right that uh genocide or show was being used as red herring whether mm-hmm. or not they're there like I'm like it's it's not going to be them. It's too plain and obvious for it to sure. be that person at this point. And then after that, I was like, well, they're still in a, locked in a school with a killer. Like, even like yeah, exactly. after the trial, like after this episode, before we knew who Genocide or Show really was, it was just really silly. Um, but before we knew, they were like kind of like a silly character as well. It was like, well, they're still locked in there with a with a killer. What yeah. is that supposed to lead to? But then it turned out it was something. That not a lot of people have to be afraid of identity disorder. Yeah, with Fugawa. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was literally just Tagami being a dick and one letting everyone know that there is a serial killer among them and just fucking with everyone. It did yeah. bring out this really cool character though. I really do like Genocider Show. I like Genocider Show more than Fugawa. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, totally. It's so much more fun and so much more silly, and it brings that comedy to it because. Uh-huh. Uh, um, we need some more over, over the topness. Yeah, over the top, yeah. and, and I'm fine with that character being it because we, now we know the the um, origin of it. Whenever she sneezes, <laughs> and then she's done that a few times already. We did learn uh, a couple things in this episode before we move on that there is a mole in this episode, uh, and there's a 16th student, and something that was very quick that I had to uh, rehear on that. There's three sizes to Monokuma. Oh, don't know what that means. I didn't I didn't catch that. Exactly. It was like one throwaway line at the end where he was like, there's three. I have three sizes and you this is not my most. It was she. uh, uh, Monokuma was fighting at the end whenever uh, Nagi was like peeking. Oh, that's right. He's like, I have three sizes and this one's not whatever. Something like that. And I was like, what does that mean? So 
uh, some information there, but there are 10 remaining. And now we move on to a whole nother arc, uh, which was interesting. The episode six, not normal arc, return of the new century galaxy legend. Oh, armored hero stand upon the earth. That was the name of episode six. So let's get into episode six. What happened? The school's third floor becomes unlocked, granting new areas for the students to investigate. Monokuma adds a new motive to the table, this time it being 10 billion yen to whoever graduates. A laptop is found left behind by Fujisaki with an AI on board by the name of Alter Ego. Alter Ego's introduction causes some emotional discourse for Yamada and Ishimaru. Kirigiri needed... Uh, needing to remind them that it is a clue for them to utilize, not a toy to play with. The next day, Alter Ego turns up missing, and the Robo Hammer double homicide crisis begins. Yamada and Ishimaru both end up killed, which sets up the next class trial. <clears throat> and there's eight remaining. Mm -hmm. Um, the introduction of Alter Ego was interesting because it took like a turn that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Alter Ego and this concept of a room with no surveillance. Sure. Where they can um, just kind of talk and chat land. without being watched. Did, did they ever give a reason why it wasn't in these episodes? Like why it wasn't? They don't really say why. It's just, hey, this room's different. Do you, do you have you noticed? Looks around. Oh, no cameras. Yeah. And that's where they leave it pretty much. Uh huh. Um, but Alter Eagle's the AI that um, got left behind and it was supposed to help. And they know Alter Ego knows so much about them already because the computer hacker Probably. was. Or Fujisaki like programmed in. Yeah, all programmed their it with information and stuff, all their profiles. And then they have that cool little <laughs> a little segment where it's where AI uh, Alter Ego was like. Owada. Oh, Owada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they have this whole little thing. Like that's fun and stuff. Like all that uh -huh. stuff is fun. I really uh -huh. enjoy that. Part. I buy it because it's again this super high level programmer, and you know we're at, we're dealing with these top tier students at what they do. So I I buy that for sure. Yeah, I, I'm not definitely not questioning it. I just don't I just don't know about the pacing. Yes, because here <laughs> in this episode it gets really slow, and like I'm cool with that. I'm cool with the little fun. I'm cool with the slow building to well, what's going to happen next? Who's going to die? Who's going to kill whatever. I like that slow little build and it's giving us a little information, right? That there's a new, there's a new room here, not surveilled alter ego here, whatever, all this stuff. And then it finally hits us with, okay, these people are dead. What's yep. going to happen now? Cool. Little cliffhanger there. But then <laughs> immediately, like in the next episode, it goes breakneck speed during the trials. And I'm just like, we yeah. got to get some more episodes here Yeah, um, because this is fun. Like I like uh -huh. this little part where they introduce a new motive he's like oh there's 10 billion yen they have some and time to I, I i like the concept that you know the school's getting bigger new rooms are unlocking he keeps introducing new motives that could be tempting people to like you know commit but then also uh then we get alter ego and the concept of alter ego and that kind of becomes this like auxiliary motive just mm -hmm. for uh ishimaru and yamada, yamada. And it's like that creates, you know, some animosity between them. And you think that one of them is going to end up killing each other. And I honestly had a passing thought. I was like, I feel like I feel like more than one person is going to end up dead right now. And then they both ended up. Dead. I, I was not expecting that. I was I not was expecting like, that. I was, both I, was, I was I really felt like that was coming with the whole they introduced two motives in one episode. I was like, now two people okay. can have a reason to kill. Obviously spoiler non-spoiler it doesn't end up being two people killing two people but uh one person offing Kill. both of them yeah yeah um i didn't think about it that way i just thought that this was gonna alter ego was, was gonna stay until the end i thought alter ego was just gonna be there mm -hmm. and part of the fun here with the new motives is also giving the audience the time to be like oh who from what we know about these characters who would be swayed by this thing whenever they introduce the i have a secret each of y'all has a secret here and then at the end it's going to be revealed that was really fun because it was like oh who has what secret what is this and then it came up this whole thing uh this whole you know other thing but like the 10 billion yen we saw some people get swayed by it a little bit and be like hold on what's this about uh we could do this and this and all this stuff and then alter ego i didn't even think about 
alter ego as being like a motive. I just thought it would stay there. Kind as of a like that's like I see that, you know, alter ego gets introduced and it's fine and whatever. But then the two guys start like, oh, it's it's my brother. Oh, no, it's my it's my waifu. Like, <laughs> like it's it's the only girl that's ever talked to me <laughs> like, yeah. like a normal person. Yeah. Then it's always like, it's not interested in you. It's just interested in information. <laughs> so we get this whole thing, this whole setup on this one. Um, we are dinging some rompas here. Yes, easy. We're talking about rompas. episode five through nine. We're on episode six. We're just about to get into episode seven. But uh, we get the Justice Hammers. Uh, yeah. We see them there as possibly the killing weapon. Uh, we and two people are one, down. Two, yeah, three, et cetera. Mm -hmm. two people One. are down and then also uh cell they find they also find cell knocked out mm -hmm. cell chell however you pronounce that um, sure. they find her knocked out by the first justice hammer and that's how the whole crisis like kind of proceeds this was probably the most interesting one to me because i was like how did this happen yeah and the whole bodies was was it this one where the bodies were moved or something or the bodies were gone was yes. it this episode the bodies ended up like missing and moved and then yeah. they, like reappeared and every uh it's it's cell specifically who i think keeps putting forward the oh the bodies vanished oh the bodies vanished and then it's uh togami who finally says like stop saying they vanished whoever killed them hid them that's all that could happen like they're not vanishing into mm -hmm. thin air and i i it, liked that bit where he like he was like Sp speak before you there's think there's logic here yes. yeah there's logic behind this there's reasoning and you're so just this, trying to make it seem like it's smoke and mirrors or whatever. This one was probably the most interesting setup for me, where it was like, I have no clue. Like, uh, again, I keep bringing up Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes because this is the way I feel when I read the stories about Sherlock Holmes, where they give a thing and it's like, oh, there's no way. There's nothing here that I can think of. I'm like, I'm racking my brain. I'm like, how did this happen? How is this happening? And this is kind of the feeling I got in this episode because it was like, who moved them? Like, I was like, yep. what are what, they're disappearing? And then this is happening. Uh, Alter Ego's missing. I was like, and they're both <laughs> down. They're, the two guys that I thought would take it are both down. Exactly. I got to watch the next episode. So, yeah. like, this one was the most compelling for me um, so far. So, episode seven, not <clears throat> normal arc, same as above is the name of the episode. Yes. Yeah. Same <laughs> as above. above. Um, so, episode seven, what happens there? Um, the students who would find the bodies, uh, the two bodies, begin to investigate. <clears throat> Kitty Giddy and Hagakure being the only ones missing, the latter being found inside the robot costume. Monokuma calls for the trial to begin, and everyone begins to go over the evidence. After much deliberation, it is resolved that the evidence leads to nobody being a prime suspect. However, Naegi calls upon cell to repeat something she had said earlier after finding the first body she would infer that two murders had happened which would have her knowing about a murder she was not present for with a body Ooh. that had not been found yet mm -hmm. cell breaking naegi uh, asks her to show her student handbook which would notate her name um implying her as the murder which uh yamada gave uh the last name in his dying breath <clears throat> Cell accepts defeat, going on to explain how she used Yamada as a pawn in an attempt to pull off a double homicide. Cell gives Kitty Giddy the key to Alter Ego's location. Cell is Cell Chell is dragged off to her punishment, a uh, Versailles style witch hunt stake. Nagi finds a secret room and gets knocked out while inside finding everything uh missing after reawakening <clears throat> this was probably to go off the back of the Episode last one six. this was probably the most confusing one for me. yeah um i was trying so hard to keep up uh kaylee said even the second time i played it in the game i was like this is so complicated that i don't remember what happened once i like i i, I had to rewind certain parts just to like make sure they were sticking for me and once like i finally understood what was going on it's like oh like that's okay like i i get it that's awesome i see how that happened but it took me effort to get there it was not yeah. it was not like 
<clears throat> just given to me for sure. And whether that's my fault, like because I'm just not able to keep up with what the show's throwing at me at the pacing or whatever, but that's how I felt. I least. think it's that also like, because we're reading subtitles. That too. If if it was our help. natural language, it would probably be good. It would probably be easier, but I have to read, yeah. read, read. read I'm just process. like going. <laughs> read, process, go, 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 go. So uh, again, one of the down points in this anime for sure. Uh, probably worse. This is probably the worst one for pacing, I think, mm-hmm. in, in all the ones that we've seen. But we get this whole um, Justice Robo thing. We see the clasp is on the outside. So automatically I was like, oh, so it wasn't him. Like everybody's already pointing their finger uh, at Big Hair Guy. And <laughs> they're like... I, I already don't believe it. There's something else to it. We get the whole hammer situation. Um, I see this, 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 I paused it here and I was looking at everything up top, how it says like <clears throat> clubbed, fake, fake, injured, clubbed. And once I was able to like connect that to what they were, how they're talking about um, mm-hmm. how the hammers were used, like that's when everything made sense to me. That's when I was able to put the timeline together. Um <clears throat> and it makes until sense until then it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes sense that Shell was able to um you know befriend Yamada in this oh, yeah. whole situation because we've already seen it before with the whole tea situation. Yeah. Where he was like uh getting her tea and then she was like, "Oh, I don't want it." And he was like, "Yes, yes, I'll get you yeah. whatever." My and queen. she she emotionally manipulated him and lied to him. <laughs> yeah. And and it makes sense that she did it again. Like yeah. she did it during in here. Uh, to do you know uh, the whole explanation of oh you know it's so much I don't even know if I want you know what happened in the whole yeah you might get on my side because so and so whatever all this stuff Uh, and going through it the we are going really fast and we're going through so many people I did not believe that we were going to get down to this many this quickly um which makes me excited but then like kind of like how is this gonna end is it gonna end are we gonna get like a definitive answer to what's happening and how they if they get out um i don't know it was just really (laughs) (laughs) i'm right here with you (laughs) yeah so celeste was a culprit because she said they before anybody knew yeah that there was a second body that it was a double murder before they knew it was a double murder yeah so that was it was that was kind of like the only point at that point he was just like how did how did you know she was just like you're trying to make me the bad guy and she just immediately starts to like break her break her character yeah CZ says, honestly, watching this back, I'm re- re- realizing it is confusing. I'm enjoying it still. The style, the premise of the game anime, just so intriguing and can't wait for y'all to watch the rest of the series. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like the premise. I like what they're doing I like here. The I like the setups. Yeah. The characters are really cool. Um, even though they did spend a lot of time on like the two brotherhood, whatever thing, that's really cool. Like the whole little side story of them becoming brothers and then the aftermath of that. I'm like, this mm-hmm. is so dope. Like I like that little, those little parts, those little sections where we get some characters interacting with each other and they're all super interesting. Um, it's just how all the information is laid. There's so much information that they feel like they need to show us. And most of it, I'm pretty sure all of it, is necessary but yeah that's the thing do you need all the all the required components in order for the definitive culprit to be 100 percent clear without there being any other argument to be made like that that those are all things that need to be there but then when you're not giving the rest of the show enough time for the audience to like air air out and have like time to recuperate after a, 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 a class trial and then losing a character etc it's just yeah like we we keep coming back to it's just a pacing thing uh for me with the show for sure Mm -hmm. we find out like it doesn't it doesn't mean i don't like the show it's just like if the further it goes on the more this problem becomes apparent yeah it could have done with the being 24 episodes instead of 13 yeah i think so um i would watch this for 24 episodes for sure yeah 
especially if we get more of the the fun little st- side mm-hmm. stuff because i'm pretty sure that's what a lot of the game is like you said it's breaking broken down into three different parts investigation i want to spend more time on the investigation because in this one we just went straight to trial. Have them talk about the things that they're picking up and like the context of where they're finding it so that way later on in the trial when they have that aha moment <clears throat> it'll be like more impactful because when that aha moment comes it's like oh yeah i remember when they showed me the broken glass for like five frames last yeah. episode <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, that was kind of a big thing. It doesn't give us time when Naegi is trying to figure it out. It feels like he's just superhuman to me. Exactly. Like whenever, yeah, exactly. yeah, whenever Naegi is trying to, like, put it, he's like, there's got to be one more thing really quick. I'm going to think, going to go back in my mind. Boom, I figured it out. And it's like, okay. Well, okay. if they would have given me, like, a little time for him to, like, play through all the little moments, then it would be like, oh, I found it out with him. But it just feels like he's just so OP right now because he's instantly figuring it out because of the pacing. Yes. Um, but I think that's also a problem. Better. A problem that I uh, wanted to point out is how the more the <laughs> cast like shrinks, the more suspicious. I get. I don't know if it's this was just me again, but the more suspicious behavior just seems like overly suspicious because the whole time i was like chell cell is the only one that has any input on anything that's going on and it seems like she's just trying to like again put up smoke and mirrors in front of people to make it seem like oh my god we're we're never gonna figure this one out and it's like oh well if you don't figure it out who's the person that gets away with it (laughs) so that's how it just felt um with with less people there's less room to blend into the background for the, sure. the culprit i guess and yeah because every time they went into a different room it was like always her that talked first and talked only and i was like yes. i was like oh okay she's just talking now yeah she'd just be talking i guess when before the most she would have to say is you know oh well people who don't adapt are they're the ones that die but now yeah. it's like shh she's like front yeah. and center constantly so <clears throat> that just made it kind of sus which I guess you could say with the next case kind of like flipped that on its head for me because I was kind of taken off guard with the next case. Kind of. Well, okay. We could talk about it. It says super high school level. Good luck. Gotta come in handy. I guess. Good luck in brain remembering, I guess. I don't know. Um, But there's a mole. Possibly we get that information as well. We get some confirmation um, about the mole and we uh, go into episode eight all all apologies what happens in episode eight episode eight um so the fourth floor uh, to the school opens up once again giving the students new areas to roam about checking back on alter ego the ai has a load of new information to give our group about the past of the school excuse me the biggest most atrocious despair inducing incident in human history would have the school shutting down and beginning a so-called isolation plan. Monokuma uh, recalls the students to the gym to announce that there is a mole in their midst, Naegi already knowing that it's Ogami, everyone else getting thrown into disarray. Um, Monokuma announcing it is Ogami. Ogami apologizes to everyone, especially Asahina. Naegi and Kitty. Giddy decide to hook Alter Ego up to the internet in the secret room they found. <laughs> uh... Ogami's dead body is found later in the game room, sitting upright on a bench. Asahina gathering everybody, then announcing that Fukawa, Hagakure, or Tagami is the culprit, as Ogami asked to meet with all of them earlier that day. Six remain. So we're down to six down to six well five at the end of the next one but um well six still but the alter ego dies but um (laughs) what happened at the high school what do you think what happened at the high school before for it to turn into this because that's kind of like the crux of this how are they going to figure it out who knows? Yeah, that's the big question. I, guess. I still think Kirigi knows a little bit more than she's letting on. We still don't know her story. Super high school level amnesiac. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that now that there's like a 30 something year old principal that was there, that Monokuma calls himself principal. I don't know if that's the same person. 
There was somebody that was in there. The 16th student is somewhere in there as well. Um, so there's a lot of little things playing off on the sides that we're probably going to find at the end of this show. But like, what, <clears throat> what do you think with the information that we're given so far? Cause I don't think we get any more information at the end uh, by episode nine, but like, what do you think is happening in this, in this high school? Uh, I feel like there are very few times where I'm just like, I have no idea. And this is just one of those times where there's it's such a unique situation that I just have very little to like, you know, draw on to even mm -hmm. to even guess like what what were what was the phrasing again? It was the biggest, most atrocious despair inducing event in human history that's what caused the high school to shut down like what in human history but it happened recent and none of them know about it it happened recently and none of them know about it like what could that be <laughs> yeah i don't know well we we find out by all the like sort of supernatural things that monokuma is up to that he seems to you know during the the executions of everybody like it could be something like out there like really out there like, like lovecraftian be, yeah maybe something like that it could be um because it's like ramping up right it could like exponentially be at the end just like monica was I an mean, alien yeah, it's taking yeah. over everybody you know what i mean it could be something he's a being from like another that. dimension that feeds on the despair of beings in this reality could be that because like in other anime that's sort of like i think of like kill la kill because it was my first anime and, and one of my favorites is that if you watch the first couple episodes it's this one thing and then by the end it's just like world shattering mm -hmm. problem thing that's happening and i really hope it's something like that because i don't see any logic in it being something that's not yeah uh, supernatural like i mean now monokuma in a lot of ways reminds me of Cube, if Cube just had a more malicious, you know, um, vernacular, yes, Cube just says the the, you know, just the says plain. things quietly, mm -hmm. um, and plainly no emotion. with no emotion. But Monokuma has this like antagonistic energy about him that maniacal, just, maniacal, yes, devious, mm -hmm. um, just scheming. a little guy. Scheming. They're both scheming little guys. <laughs> don't like either of them and like their faces no i just want to punch their faces <laughs> i think kube just a little bit more so far but monokuma i definitely just want to just mm -hmm. just right there so there's something like about me that thinks that he's still just a, a person like you know behind behind the curtain Mm -hmm. like pulling, pulling do you the think things. there's any merit to it being the principal of that time the 30 something year old principal that... i mean i think that uh, given the information that we've gotten it it wouldn't be uh you know too far of a jump to make that conclusion but mm -hmm. also it's like it's one of those things where the show has so far done a pretty good job at like setting up the the expectation of what you think where something's going to go but then they you know they introduce that one mm -hmm. element that just makes it take a complete turn in the opposite direction and you're just standing there feeling like baffled but like smart at the same time yeah i'm reading the the chat here kaylee uh, says it'd be a nice punch too because he's a teddy bear squishy i imagine a squeaky sound. toy noise. <laughs> yeah and then she says me ripping the monokuma teddy from my shells and giving a punch <laughs> for you folks thank you so much appreciate it i do want a little plush of him though that would be kind of imagine the, the meme of like holding a rat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <like> the neck. <laughs> uh Dan says also <laughs> Dan says also what could have happened that would have caused more despair than something like the Hog Exactly. The whenever you history. think about whenever you think about all of history, like what <laughs> Oh, that's literally the <laughs> That's literally the emote, yeah, with a little rat. Just holding the Monica but can you please send a picture of your hands around his throat? in the discord oh um, i appreciate it so 
uh, alter ego gets hooked up and nothing could happen. Nothing bad <laughs> could happen, right? I that's, mean, that's like the one thing where I'm just like, what are you guys thinking? Why would you do that? Leave and, it in the room with no surveillance. Exactly. But there would be no. Yeah. Well, looking it up to the Internet. Now it's online. Yeah. And he probably can see that all devices that get hooked up to the IPs or whatever. I don't know. I was and just I like, instantly this is knew. A bad idea. Yeah. I instantly knew the way that Alter Ego was like saying it. You know, we all know the trope in anime. They're oh, yeah. making such a big fuss. Oh, I'm your friend. We're going to be friends and we're going to do this and, and I'm going to help and you. Everybody's going to leave together. Oh, my God. I, know, I was instantly like, he's dead. He's gone. It, Alter Ego's gone. You're yeah. You're done, kid. Um, so they go through that. <laughs> Moral of the story. Uh, we see Ogami during this whole thing, sort of fighting Monokuma a little bit. Um, and then it's, re- it's, you know, revealed that they're the mole. Um, and then we get this picture of them sitting down mm-hmm. dead behind a blocked door. With a lot of evidence around, a lot of stuff going on. This was this was back to it being sort of fun for me, um, because it was a lot of stuff, and the whole locked door situation really posed a really big question. Um, yeah. Because again, I've seen that in Sherlock Holmes, where it's like this is impossible. How could somebody get in? And I thought there would be an answer to it. <clears throat> different than what it was. I thought, yeah, you know, at the time there was maybe a trap door or they came in through the whatever, or um, more so of a connection between uh, Sakura and what's the, what's the girl's name? Um, her friend, Aka. Mm, Ogami and uh, Asahina. Asahina. I thought there would be more of a, a connection there towards the end. Um, Same. Rather Obviously. than, you know, Sakura just ending it really quickly almost. <clears throat> but that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so we get into episode nine. All all apologies. Uh, what happens in episode mm-hmm. nine? All all apologies. Episode nine. Uh, at the front, <laughs> trigger warning. Uh, suicide. The next trial begins. There are uh, things are a bit wishy washy for a little bit as Hagakure ends up being the first person to own up to uh, you know striking Ogami with uh, a vase. But evidence shows it didn't kill her. Genocider Show stepping in also took a swing at Ogami. Evidence still proving that did not kill her. Asahina would try to convince everybody that she ran to grab uh, poison and slipped it to Ogami. And this would make her the killer. But Naegi describes how because of the nature of the case, a closed locked room murder, her story does not hold any weight. And with a combination uh, a combination of inference and evidence, Nagi discerns that Ogami actually consumed the poison willingly, killing herself in the enclosed area so no one would interfere. Uh, a reading of her will out loud would show this was done in an attempt to relieve the tensions with the students that remain so they don't turn on each other. And as a re- recompense for being the mole, essentially. Monokuma gets a bit flustered as he believed this would throw them into uh, ultimate despair, but it seems to have strengthened their bonds. Punishment time still arrives, however, with a special guest. Alter Ego arrives on the scene to be the victim of a dozer master. After the trial, Kitty Giddy tells Naegi on the side that the 16th high schooler is somewhere on campus. Super high school level despair. Mukuru Ikusaba. Seven remaining. remaining question mark. I really liked. I really like that. Where they just added another silhouette. Yeah, that throws a whole <laughs> nother Layer. wrench in the thing. Yeah. Um, but we get the whole trial. Um again. I don't know. I that kind of sucks that that's the way Sakura yeah. went out. Um, I don't know if I'm fully happy with it. I thought there would have been what's up? I left about taste in my mouth, not gonna lie. It was really it, again, uh subverting expectations is yeah. not what I expected. I really did once uh once what's her name? Asahina started 
giving her story about how she slipped uh ogami the poison like i believed it i was like yeah like and and then now you get out like that that's the perfect murder but then maggie comes in with the the locked room situation the locked door and then i'm like oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh, kaylee says it makes sense in a way but it doesn't make me happy that's yeah that's how i feel that's what i mean by it it, it does make sense and getting around the whole locked door <laughs> situation was the hardest part um for me and how they would get out of that how they would get out of well this this sounds all fine and good this sounds fine but there's still the thing that she was behind a locked door and that's the one thing that you can't go i thought there would have been like a a, a last minute ogami telling asahina hey we're best friends i love you i'm doing this and she would do it right. And let, I mean, that sounds really bad that she would do it right in front of her. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted more care there, more care from Sakura, because I think that's how the character would have done it instead of just having her whisk, go away and then just doing it really quickly. I thought there would have been like a, hey, I want you to get out or whatever. Talk, last talk, last little conversation, because mm -hmm. it just kind of happened. Yeah. Um, because of the friendship, is that is that what you think they're trying to do with the fact that she left a will behind? I wasn't expecting the whole will thing, and yeah. I don't know if I totally believe. Well, except for the Monokuma, yeah, I guess I believe the Monokuma one because there was some information there uh, that is interesting that I want to know your thoughts. <clears throat> uh, information in the in the will because she was the mole because Sakura was the mole. Uh, she, you know rightfully probably knows a little bit more mm -hmm. than all the others and they it started off monokuma started reading oh yeah and he's like, oh wait nope that's a spoiler yeah, <laughs> yeah the mastermind has altered their bodies yeah in some way With, and i uh, do have a theory i would like to know your theory my first, immediately but... thought is that he planted a bomb in you and if you leave you blow up. oh okay that's not what i was thinking i have i put on my little sherlock holmes cap and I pulled out my magnifying That's what I immediately thought. And that's what my first thought goes to whenever, you know, you have a hostage <clears throat> situation where they're being forced to do something that they don't really want to do against their will. <sighs> they want to leave. Oh, try to leave. You blow up. You got to whatever. I think it was more um, story, more story, story driven. driven because sure, probably that's just where my first thought goes. I think the mastermind has altered their bodies, altered their memory because it feels like they already have some sort of connection of because they've done like all this stuff and it feels like they have some sort of and the photos that we got in the photos because they have photos together of all the dead kids like yeah. all the ones that are dying immediately there's a photo there and it's like wait what are they still alive is this is this not real or whatever that's i think that's what they want you to think but i think this is from the past because when yamada was knocked out when Yamada got hit, he was coming back, coming to a little bit. He said, I knew all of you before. I knew this. Uh, y'all are familiar or something like that. He said, I knew all of y'all from before. And this all uh, feels familiar. I know y'all or something like that. And they're like, what is that? And then nobody touched it ever again. So I think that at some point they knew each other and they were together at some point. And this is all for something there's like some greater plan here and that has me intrigued way more than anything else that has me intrigued and i follow that completely up to a certain question that gets posed if that's a if that's a theory then why did naegi and my zono remember each other i don't know because they're like oh childhood friends they, they seem to be the only two people that were outwardly expressing that they knew each other from True. before. True. But like that, everything you said makes sense. Like I follow yeah. it all the way up to my Zono. Yeah. How did, the, how, I hope they bring her back up because that was really important too. Like this whole thing that they did have some connection already. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I think, or they were a part of what happened before and maybe they're like ghosts of themselves uh reliving reliving this whole thing again over and over it could be anything i oh, do no. think it is Maggie supernatural is just though. seeing dead people 
yeah now you're just seeing dead people hello fast cookie how's it going welcome 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 uh we're talking about dang and rampa episode five through nine we're talking about episode nine right now and it was all a dream yeah every and then he wakes up and then he goes to school he was this is all a dream before the first day of school and then it just becomes <laughs> that he's going to school <laughs> uh they, they were not direct friends and never actually interacted though y- 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 they knew of each other they knew of each other weren't they were not friends they never talked to each other i don't remember i thought that it ref i thought it infers that like you know they went to school together I they think. went to school together i guess maybe, maybe they weren't friends but Wait, did they not go over my zono and nagi's uh friendship in the anime like so lightly because she's yeah. dead by the end of the first episode <laughs> or whatever <laughs> dead by the end of the second episode start of the second episode yeah i can't remember but you know they went to elementary um, school together and i think my zono admired him because he saved a swan he saved us sw- sh- we don't get that we don't get that in anime no do i don't remember that. that at all uh less than a month i have followed you for four years so thank you so much fast cookie i appreciate it thanks for the follow appreciate <laughs> being here talking about anime hope you like anime i thought they would talk about it a bit more at least no they, they could like reveal it at the end i i, I think it's too late oh, for that already yeah, but that. um so we get the whole the whole trial i i don't know i'm not feeling it the trial the trial this I was time? Just, yeah i was just like okay that's that's cool I, guess. I i the trial was less felt less compelling this time and again i think it's a pacing thing i think there's too much trial off the back of how much uh of the rest of the show is giving us in comparison um with other stuff but in this trial specifically i do want to say i did like how togami kind of went into like a state of denial where he was like no there's like there's something else that we're missing this this can't be how this is resolving like she she did this for no for no personal gain blah 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 like he it's showing the side of him that's just completely calculating cold callous and everything come to the surface when an act that was performed completely out of like one's emotions uh, happens, especially if you're just doing it to harm of self. And then you have Kitty Giddy coming back and I'm saying, you know, I told you if you kept acting this way, the rug was going to get pulled out from under you. So I like that set up with this uh, for this, uh, for this trial, how Mm -hmm. you just see him freaking out and flipping out because it's not like they're ruining the game or whatever for him um i'm trying to upload and so, i'm uploading something right oh. now Steezy, <laughs> Steezy I, I just fun. got us a, a a live look at what's going on <laughs> thank you Steezy. <laughs> we appreciate it thank you for uh, your service <laughs> thank you for your service i appreciate it yes exactly like that keep it going uh thank you for that <laughs> i was trying to do that really quickly thank you cool um we get Super high school level despair. Ikbasa introduced the <laughs> yeah. It's gonna give me every time. Uh, CZ also said there is a hundred percent way, a hundred percent a lot of info skipped for the sake of making the anime short. But then it makes stuff like that and characters' backstories just hard to follow. I don't really know yeah. much of anybody's character backstory. I just know their general demeanor. I know how they are right now, um, and what they did before, but not a whole lot uh, after that. Yeah, like we don't get Cell's entire backstory till she's literally about to be dragged away. Well, not even yeah. her b- uh, backstory, but like her motivation. She's like, I've always wanted to live like royalty in a castle, like surrounded by servants, yada, yada, yada. I was this close to, for that to, you know, becoming a reality. Yeah. And when the, yeah, when the 20 million yen gets put on the table, I buy it. Like I buy that she would make her move then. Like she was mm-hmm. waiting until the, uh, that time. Not waiting, but saw an opportunity. This was the time. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, well this is what i want so i'm gonna go after it so i like that i like we eventually kind of get some of that from them but Mm -hmm. yeah dan says yeah they went to a school together but he said he was surprised she knew who he was because she was so popular gotcha yeah a lot of the backstories come from the free time in the game so a lot of that is missed gotcha okay um who is this high school level despair guy who is he's, he's the reason the event happened, the super most despair inducing event in human history. So he was he's the catalyst of this. the catalyst or the product. 
product. He relates to it. There, but no apparently he's not, still there. Not, Something you know, that we yeah. we we didn't talk about is that there's a secret room. Naegi gets knocked out at one point, possibly from the principal, possibly from the 16th student. Ever since the beginning, there was always a place at the trial for a 16th student. That's but never, Monokuma never about. was just like, ah, oh, don't overthink it. It just means this courthouse can house 16 people. Like, All right, bro. <laughs> so did he expect that person to be there? He knows they're there. Okay. There's no way with all the cameras and stuff in the. So in the you school. don't think that Ikubasa is somewhere behind that, working against Monokuma? Monokuma knows about this person. Uh, I would, I would bet that they're working with Monokuma. Like, hey, there was a mole. Okay, who's not to say there's a second mole? Hmm. I don't know what I think about this person. Knocks out Naegi, takes all the stuff, takes all the books. I do think it's, I think they're stuck there. I think that there's, for some yeah. reason, they can't leave. Yeah. And they want to do something about it. Uh, but then again, all the other ones are stuck there and can't leave. So, but I think this other person has something to do with Kirigiri. There's some connection there. Um, whether it's Kirigiri's going back into the game to rescue this person or Kirigiri is connected to this person, like her brother or something like that. I really do think that Kirigiri is uh, knows more about this person than we than we think, and she's there because of him. Whether it's to save or kill or help, like I think there's some connection there between the two to take down this place or to escape it or try and save. Because at the beginning, that's what I thought. I think at the beginning, I thought Kirigiri's in the game again whether by force or by choice. And she's back to save somebody that got left behind because they never graduated because they didn't kill. I even think that she was left behind there at first. She could possibly still have been left behind there because she didn't kill because the way to graduate is to kill and get away with it. What if you just don't kill anybody? Do you go for another semester in there? Like that, that hasn't been explained. I think there's something to that. What if Monokuma modified their bodies so that way they never age and they'll be stuck there forever as high schoolers where he can feed on their despair? Mm. So you do go along with the thought that Monokuma is getting something out of this? Yeah. Like he's a supernatural being or something? I, because that... I, that's what, at this point, I want to believe. Okay. That's what I want to hope the show is going to in that direction. Cause I feel like that'll be the better ending versus uh some ex thirty plus year old high school principal just on some weird like ego trip. quest <laughs> ego trip. My students used to never listen and now this is sure. what I'm gonna do to get back at the student. Generation. Definitely. I I hope it's not that. He he's even like the, the 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 guy Monokuma. He's even talked a couple times about like, oh well, you guys are the lazy generation. Like sure. he sounds like a boomer sometimes. Not even sure. Lying. Yeah. Huh. I didn't think about that either. Hmm. Okay. A lot so of people that are watching. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people that are watching already know the answers. We're gonna find it out next week because next week we're gonna talk about the end of this of this anime, episode ten through thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. 10 through 13. Um, and we're going to end the anime. We're going to rate it on our tier list. It's going to be here on the tier list. And we're going to give you our rating, possibly wherever we think. On the left is me. On the right is Matt. We're going to put it there. And then we're going to pick a new anime. We have a lot of anime to pick from. And these are the anime oh, yeah. that we have to pick from next week. And we're going to be picking a new anime to go on the journey with. Again, we are the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. And we do... Uh, new episodes every Thursday it might change next week. Sorry, I got a new job. Oh. Um, but <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go down yep. and watch uh, anime. We've already done so many anime. If you, this is your first time watching us, we have a ton in the back catalog. So go to Spotify, watch on Spotify. Just look up the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. Um, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jules the Human. I have a whole playlist of all the anime we've already done. You can go watch all those if we miss one, if you miss one of your favorites. And then next week, we're going to finish off Danganronpa and pick one from this list. And a lot of them Ooh. are user submitted. Some of them are my or Matt submitted. 
uh cz double bill which other one did you put in there cz i don't even remember um uh, kiss sniper uh, maybe bakaman get it got that it's all right cz just you know just send me that little that little side <laughs> that little side you know? it was kiss sniper okay um dan says also could be a kid that was bullied in the school and he wants to put others through what he went through yeah could be could be some you see yeah i i w- i want it to be more than just human something yeah i hope it is because they set it up so grand with all these executions and stuff it's on its way matt dory all right <laughs> the bribery happens but matt <laughs> um where can they find you when you're not uh in despair when i'm not there like i am now you can find me on my twitch at uh matt underscore galley or you can follow me on any of my socials um at its matt underscore galley just put an its at the front and you'll find me when we're not here despairing it up in the dang and rompas uh where can the people find you uh jules the human j-u-l-e-s the human on all social media on instagram on x on threads on um all the on youtube uh you can look up my name on spotify and i'm pretty sure you can find this podcast under there as well um go to the discord if you would like uh give us your thoughts about dang and rampa over there uh we appreciate it if you're watching this later on youtube give us your thoughts in the comments we love reading all those comments shout out to everybody doing that and watching over on youtube uh but yeah join the discord let's talk about it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's so cool didn't know match streamed oh no uh. oh wow you just started cool <laughs> um yeah i said I'm you can follow me on my twitch <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding oh, when, right. when when all the stars align we all know what happens <laughs> sorry you're gonna stream Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah, let's we'll start sure. a stream only campaign. I want to. I will. Maybe. Yeah, I will. I will. Soon. I'll just continue on mine. Anyways, we'll be playing Baldur's Gate. Uh, go join the Discord. Uh, follow us on other things, and we'll see you next week for the end of Dang and Rampa. Bye.